Happy Thursday. Welcome back, folks. It's me and Brian today. Hope y'all are having a great, hope y'all had a great week. Um, kind of getting to the end of it now. Mm -hmm. It is warming up in South Georgia, though. It's starting to get hot. It's starting to feel like baseball weather. Yeah. Um, I'm sweating right now. But welcome in to the weekly live session. We hope all of you are doing good. Um, as usual, this is our weekly uh, time for you to come in and ask us questions in regards to the program or any issues that your kids are having, whether it be in games, um, game at bats, BP, whatever the case may be. Uh, now is the time to get clarification on any concerns or questions that you have. Go ahead and uh, you all start out, kind of chime in, let us know where you're from, where you're located at, so we have an idea of kind of what part of the country some of you are. Another thing y'all can chime in with is uh, AGL's kids that are being trained, you know, how old they are, um, kind of what they're doing right now in season, how's it going, all that kind of stuff. San Antonio, 10 years old. Okay. Yep. Been dealing with a lot of Younger 10, 11, 12-year-old kids lately. Up in Chicago, high school game yesterday was 36 degrees. <laughs> Man. Ooh, that was Ooh. my least favorite thing to do, no, play baseball in cold weather, man. Goodness. Yeah, 100, 100 I'd rather, and yeah, Lord. Chill. Yeah, and humid, too. I hope I say this right. La, I'm going to say La Canada, but I'm, I'm assuming that may be La Canada. I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you. Um, I'll let you. I'll let you uh, decide for that. Yeah, a lot, I, we're, we we live in Cairo. A lot yeah. of folks say that it's Cairo, but it's not. Um, here's a question. My son just started playing on the club team, along with little league. He has been doing very good against good pitchers, not so good on bad pitching, striking out, um, striking out, looking more. A lot of times, kids do have issues when they go from. I mean, faster pitching to slower pitching. We hear it all the time, kids talking about how I just can't hit slow pitching. Well, I think that's the biggest myth that there is. Yeah. You can hit BP. You can hit flips. You can hit, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of stuff. You can hit slow pitching. Yeah. The distance is just farther apart. Mm -hmm. um, we really have to understand letting the ball travel. Yes. We have to understand that we do have more time than what we think. A lot of times kids – think they have to get the swing off so fast that they don't allow the ball time to get to the hitting zone their swing here's the hitting zone and the ball is way out here and they've already turned it loose and there's no shot no shot that they're going to make good contact so um mm -hmm. kids can hit slow pitching the number one thing i think for me it was having to think go the other way a lot more so than i wanted to yeah um i had to really think to myself i'm going to let this pitch get deep and i'm going to try to shoot this ball at the first base, mm -hmm. um, really stay inside, let it travel. Again, if they throw something inside, it's slow pitching, so you're not going to get beat. Yeah, um, They're not going to tie you up. The kids will be athletic enough to turn and get that ball. But yeah. when you're dealing with slow pitching, you've really got to slow it down and tell yourself to let the ball travel, let it get deep, Yeah, go the other way. And I think training-wise, I would say that um, to really focus on controlling, especially my load and my knee fire, mm -hmm. I think if you have a really good concept and control of that, it kind of helps you a little bit with that slower pitching because a lot of people with slower pitching don't want to get out to it so quick. So well, they try to use their hands more mm -hmm. and they're way out front. If we, you have if, if you have yeah. a good feeling like you're talking with your leg, yeah. getting that load, putting the foot down mm -hmm. and feeling that foot hold you. Yeah. A lot of times kids' foot, their front foot will hit the ground and they'll go right over that foot because yeah. they're, they've already committed, they're ready to swing. And mm -hmm. so now slow pitching kills them. They're way out front. Yeah. They've got to get used to be able, to being able to load, put that foot down, and just sit there comfortably. Mm -hmm. I can turn it loose at any point I want to because I'm in control of my body. I'm balanced, and I have my weight in the right place. Uh, he said on the Little League pitchers, not the fast pitching. He's, um, he's loading good. Hasn't said this, but it looks like he's thinking too much versus the good pitching. He's locked in and ready to hit. Yeah, probably thinking a lot. When the ball slows down, you have a lot more time to think. Yeah. And 
a lot of times when you have time to think, it's not the best thing for kids because their mind wanders and it goes to a lot of different things. They're trying to – the ball's slower, so it should be easier to hit. So now I'm trying to crush this ball way out mm -hmm. there. I can't do that. Um, the pitcher, most of the time, he provides the power anyways. That's where the velocity is coming from initially. Yeah. So slow pitching, we have to accept that the ball is probably not going to go as far as you want it to or as far as you'd like it to. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to make it go far. You're trying to hit it hard. There's a difference to me. Yeah. I mean, just let well, it get deep and be quick through there, mm -hmm. quick past that ball, and uh, take your chances. Yeah. Don't let your concepts change when you get to slower pitching. You just let it travel longer. It's, mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to get into the – like he was talking about, trying to hit it harder or farther because yeah. it's slower. Still have your same mindset. Still have that line drive opposite field. Don't let the slow pitching change that. Mm-hmm. Because now it looks like a beach ball coming up here, and I'm about to try to hit this out of the park. Let your concept stay the same, because those that line drive concept will lead to those home runs. Okay, it'll lead to those power, those line drives in the gap, extra base hits. Right. Absolutely, that's a great question there. Good question, starting us off. Anybody else? Still got a few new ones joining us. Welcome in, guys and gals, if there are. Some uh, ladies joining us. Thank you for being here today. As usual, it's our weekly live session. Time for you to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Bring them on, anything, guys. I know I got a kid playing uh, in the league right now. He's eight years old. Um, we hit with a bunch of kids, anywhere from eight to 16, 17 years old up in here. So we've seen pretty much everybody that you can think of. So let us know how your kids are doing. What they're, what they're struggling with, too, as far as not just the swing, but mentally. There's a lot of mental that goes into this, too, with this program. You got a hand raised right here. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm not, I can't hear you very well for one second. Something's up with mine. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we sir. Can. We... Go ahead. Hey, hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Seward, and I appreciate you all doing this. I, I had some questions. I'm helping my son. We're, uh, we're doing both the 10 day. Not really great. Uh, but. You're cutting out on us, John. Yeah. One is uh, pretty simple. It's like, how important is the true form of the of a uh, real game? So, for an example, my son holds it. Yeah, we're losing you, John. Hands up pretty high uh, by his, when he's in the in the lab. His hands are lower, and he just he he doesn't bring them up. I I talked to him about it, but I was wondering how important that is. And then the second part of that is on the 10 day challenge, uh, he's hitting about 50 miles an hour. What I'm reading on my um, radar gun says about 50 miles an hour off the tee. Is that right? Is that, or is that a skewed number? Um, tell me again how old your kid is. Yep. Say that again, man. We're losing you. You're cutting out off a little bit. Okay, so my, my son's hitting about 50 miles an hour off the tee. Right. Is that a good number or is that, is that, is that about right? I, I have no idea what, the, what it should be. He's uh, 12, hits, hits the ball pretty hard, but I just don't know, is that a, am I getting a good number there? That's probably general, general average somewhere yeah. around in there. He's 12, so, I mean, he hasn't really matured to a level where he's going to be 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, I wouldn't okay. be too worried about the, the beginning number. I would worry more so about his mechanics, um, how consistent he is at being able to hit the ball solid off a tee. A lot of times the younger kids are, you'll put a ball on the tee and it'll be a good one and then a rollover and then maybe a decent one here, but the ball's kind of bouncing around the cage, not really going to the same spot and the ball's not moving it's on the tee. So we want to really improve the consistency of his mechanics, making sure that we're staying inside the ball, taking proper path. Um, you're talking about having his hands in different places. Maybe when he's in the cage, he starts lower. And when he's in the game, yeah. he goes up higher. 
we, yep. we want to find out where he wants to be, which one's more comfortable, and that's where he's got to be all the time. Because mm -hmm. it's like anything else. If I if I go in a game or if I hit in the cage standing up tall and then I go in a game and I spread out real, real wide, yeah. I mean, things are going to be different. My body's going to be uncomfortable because it's not used to doing that. Yeah. Um, and even if he if he's more comfortable with his hands up, well, his hands haven't been trained up there. Yeah. They've been trained from down here. Yeah. So now they're going to be that, – That's what I was worried about. They're going to be – I mean, I, I can't tell you what they're going to do, but they're going to do something different. Um, because of his hand position. Yeah, I would say that when he's getting in games, he's not overly confident in what he's been learning so far. So he's going, he's referring back to old mm -hmm. bad habits yeah. when he's getting into the game. And you just got to preach to him that you have to, you have to really believe in this and commit to it. Otherwise, it won't, you won't get that in-game result. Yeah. Um, because this is it's it's a new to a lot of kids, and they have to All right. understand that this philosophy. Is it makes so much sense and it's it's right, and they have to commit to that, and not when they get in a game, steer away from that and go back into bad habits and get bad results. Yeah, and it's natural to do that. I mean, yeah. we have 10, 11, 12 year old kids in here every day. One of them just came in here yesterday with the same kind of conversation like we're having right now. Yeah. Um, looks good in the cage, but it's just not there in the game. He's doing something completely different in the game, and. It's not because he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. It's because he's not focusing on what he needs to focus on when he gets in the game. I don't need to be so worried about what the pitcher's doing or what's going on all out here or what my mechanics are going to do. That's why I work. I worked on my mechanics so that when I get in the game, all I've got to do is just find the ball. Get here, get comfortable, find the ball, and then let my body take over, let my swing take over. All right. Well, we're on the same page. I, I appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. man. That, that, that kind of I, I agree. Yes, sir. Well, hey, um, if you have any other questions, feel free to text the the hotline. Um, you can find that number inside of the Camwood program portal, and um, or met, feel free to message us either way. All right, got another one here. Coming to you, Eric. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. What's going on? Sir, sorry if it's loud. I'm outside. No problem. Um, no, just had a question. Um, I purchased the 30-day uh, the program. You know, got the Camwood bat and then the one-handed. Um, just kind of curious what your thoughts would be, like, on the um, – just because we've got travel baseball coming up. we got a tournament this weekend and then one memorial weekend. And then just kind of curious what we could implement in that short time in between. Because mm -hmm. we didn't ah, – I didn't – find you guys until like until the season started so kind of didn't get to do the 30-day program right kind of curious what we can do for our team in those you know two three weeks right to kind a of see of some time, improved mechanics we have this question a lot of a lot of folks kind of they they feel like they're late to the party but you're really not i mean mm -hmm. the, the best time to give this to a kid and t or to your team is as soon as you find out about it um uh -huh. if you take the program the bats and just start with the hand drills the yeah. one-hander and the two-hander um, really focus mm -hmm. on the concepts that those are trying to teach. The one-hander being proper path of the lead hand, making sure we stay straight and inside the ball, not wanting to turn that barrel around, but letting mm -hmm. that barrel naturally whip through on its own, finishing at the pitcher, learning how to get extended with the bottom hand more so than our top hand, because this one's got right. more Then you go into that two-hand trainer, same thing, mm -hmm. letting them go two and twos back and forth just kind of trying to improve their hands. We always tell people that yeah. if you can improve somebody's hands, you can make them a, a much better hitter. Yeah. You've got to start with their hands. That's what they're, that's where the bat's at. Yeah. That's where your contact is going to be. So mm -hmm. if I can't take this and put it on the ball, I don't care what mm -hmm. you do anywhere else. It's not going to help. Yeah. So don't, don't, I mean, beat them over the head with it, but start out, tell them that this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. And right. here we go. We're going to work and oh, yeah. just try to perfect the drill. If they can perfect mm -hmm. the drill, their swing is going to get better. Yeah. And just to add on okay. that a little bit, he's talking about hands. I would really – this is something that uh, the kids really understand because they feel it. It's, it's, it's hard for them to see their mechanics a lot. But try to get him in the concept of I want to have a directional swing. I don't want to feel myself in a rotational swing with a lot of my shoulders mm -hmm. doing a lot of the work and my both hips rotating. 
let him start to try to feel when he starts getting in these hand drills and implementing that into the full swing that he starts feeling more of a direction towards the pitcher rather than rotation in a circle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That'll help going along with those hands. Absolutely. At least during season right now, yeah. how Jonathan is talking about with just doing a lot of the hand drills to get that increase in contact. And mm-hmm. then with the lower half, I think if he thinks about that, it'll help too. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, oh yeah, I'll try that. And then definitely after that lap, that memorial tournament, we're gonna do the thirty day program again, like kind of start over and That's then go back to those mechanics. So, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys. That yeah, makes okay. sense. Very good. Here's another one from uh, John. He said my son has a tendency to step out, stepping into the bucket, he struggles with the outside pitch, plate coverage. Um, do you have any drills or advice for this? I, this is seeming to come up every week. I feel like now. Um, same concept. One thing we do with our players, if they ever have trouble with front foot going anywhere but up and down, is we spread their feet out and el- eliminate the stride. Um, the less moving parts you have, the easier it's going to be for things to not necessarily go wrong. Makes sense. If I've got a lot of moving parts up here, then I've got a lot of stuff that's got to get back in the right place for me to get going. Right now, his front foot is a moving part, and it's hard for him to get it back in the right place. Yeah. He's wanting to go away from the plate. Yeah. That's why he's losing plate coverage. That's why he's not able to hit the outside pitch. Um, so, again, spread his feet out, um, make him hit a little bit wider in his stance, and probably sink his hips, mm-hmm. get a little lower to the ground. Let him feel that weight sit towards the center of yeah. his body on the ground rather than this a lot of sweeping motion happening in your swing because mm-hmm. that ain't going to change when you go to a game. If you see that happening – yeah, he's going to do the same thing in the game. He's going to go back and sweep right over the front foot, or step out, yeah, and have that power and everything lost, and a lot of plate coverage. Yeah, we got to start. I like to say the only thing we can really control in the swing is our start, our fire. Yeah, when the swing goes, we can't control that. We just got to let that happen. Yeah, so we have to make sure that plant into that knee and back hip before it fires has to be secure before everything goes. That's right. A lot of a lot of folks will see a drastic improvement right off the bat just by spreading the kids out and mm-hmm. having them think not stride and just load and go, load and go. Because when they step out, their swing may not be as bad as what you think, but mm-hmm. their direction's off. Yeah. Now they're stepping over here. They're wanting mm-hmm. to go this way. Their swing may be good, but it's online for that, for that, way. that way. Pitch is over here. Yeah. So fix those feet, spread him out, make him a little wider, sink his hips. And you should should see an improvement on, on that pretty pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very good. Any other questions? And another um, thing we do in here to help that with that front foot is we like to get behind our players and get them to pick up that back leg and push against that front side and get them to resist us with that front side firm so they can feel how that feels when that hip fires into it and how that needs to be like a wall. we got to show them what we're talking about. Okay. What are you going to show them? This looks crazy, but this yeah, is – Yeah, it does look crazy. This is how we figure it out, folks. This is how we, this yeah. is how we teach kids. So we're talking about a front foot. If I'm here and my front foot's going like that, this foot isn't real strong. All, everything's on this leg now. So I'm going to be real unbalanced. What we want kids to feel is how this front foot has to be so solid whenever it hits the ground. So Brian stands behind him, and we pick this leg completely off the ground. You ready? Okay. And then I just let my weight fall back. I try to use my front leg to push him down, but I'm feeling the stiffness in this leg. It looks just like it would if you were hitting in a swing. You don't want that leg up like this. You don't want that leg bent like this. We've got to learn what a stiff front side feels like. 98% 98% of kids, I would say, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, have no idea what it feels like to have a stiff front side. Yeah. And you, you'll have coaches saying, come on, have a stiff front side. Have a stiff front side. Kids are still doing this. It's because yeah. they don't know what it feels like. They don't even know how to do it. Yeah. So we've got to put kids in that, in that scenario to where they feel it. Um, so, again, if he's having trouble going this way, get his feet a little wider. Have him pick that back leg up, stand behind him, and just support him and let him try to push you over. He's going to feel how firm that leg has to be, and it's going to help him right there in his swing when he gets that front foot down. Yeah.
before COVID, there was a seminar planned in Florida. Is there anything like that planned? I'm trying to remember. Really? No. There, there must have been a Campbell thing, but that was, I mean, like a month. Oh. Um, we are, speaking of programs, I'm assuming you're probably talking about training seminar, training, uh, coaching training, things like that. Um, we mentioned last week, I think the week before, that we're getting ready to start certifying coaches, um, certifying instructors. Um, if, you're, if you're a parent, okay, you're a parent, you're not a coach, you're not an instructor, you're just a parent trying to help your kid, okay, we can teach you this. We're yeah. not going to certify you. You're not going to be, I mean, have a stamp and have your name on the map that I'm a Camwood certified coach, but I'll teach you what I know how to teach this to your kid. Um, we're doing that now. Trey mentioned in the Discord the other day, somebody was asking about virtual lessons. Um, he threw my name in there. Um, Y'all see the logo here. Y'all hear, have heard about the swing shop. That's mine and Brian's facility here in yeah. Cairo. The only certified or Camwood certified facility instructors in the country. This is what we do. Yeah. We study this program. We study the swing. We study um, what everybody else teaches and, and compare it to what we teach and try to find the gray areas, try to find yeah. More reasons to prove why what we teach is so right and it's so consistent. So if you want to know that, reach out to us. We're doing virtual lessons. We're doing, um, I mean, little sessions with parents, things like that. Parents in our towns that are curious about how to help their kids at yeah. home. Um, so we'll throw that link in here as well um, for any of y'all that are interested in maybe having just a discussion on how you could better yourself as a as a parental coach. Yeah, let's let's say it like that. Mm -hmm as a parental coach not everybody wants to coach a team but they really want to coach their kids mm -hmm. and i get that you'll go to that website there swingshopofficial.com you'll be able to find um kind of what we do you'll see camwood bats links in there as well um but we're kind of a partnering facility with camwood bats again we're the only one that does this we believe in it that's why we we've, we've kind of been the adamantation of trying to get this out yeah. and about into the other hands of, I mean, the hands of other facility owners and things yeah. like that. It would be so beneficial, benef I can't talk today, beneficial to y'all if you had this facility in your town. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I would 100% agree with that. We see it here. The kids yeah. here, the kids that we deal with are nowhere near as adamant about improving their game on their own. Yeah. Like a lot of you parents are sitting in here watching this live stream. There's no parents from my hometown sitting in this live stream right now Yeah. because they don't, they'd rather bring them to me and drop them off and go. I appreciate the folks like you that yeah. are sitting in this group because you want to help your kid. We want to help you help your kid. That's yeah. what Cam Wood bats, the swing shot. That's what this entire thing is about. So feel free to reach out to us, mm -hmm. get in touch with us any way you can. Most of the time when you're talking to somebody via email from Camwood Bats or text message, phone, you're talking to me or Brian. Yep. So we are the folks that want to help get this to you. Mm -hmm. Just kind of went yeah. off on a tangent there. But yeah. Yeah. nevertheless, guys, we are extremely passionate about this. Any yes. other questions? We'll give it back to you. And to go off a little bit on what John said um, about just how we teach in here, we don't teach that you have to come here five days a week to do this whole program with us. We try to teach the kids and the parents one or two days a week and that they've learned from what we've taught them that day and they can go implement that in their practice. And that's what we try, that's what John's trying to give to y'all and preach to y'all because if y'all can learn it to the degree we know, Y'all can go home and not ever come back. You're a traveling hitting coach. Yeah, y'all can kid. go home and never come back because of that information y'all y'all have now, you'll never forget. Your kid, mm. I mean, and, and Brian's a testament to this. Brian mm. came on to Camwood Bats after I was involved. Um, mm -hmm. I was working for Camwood Bats for about a year, almost a year and a half when Brian came on. And Brian, Trey, me, all three of us played together in college. We all knew about Camwood. Trey was obviously trained up in Camwood. Yeah. Um, we were trained in after we got out of college. But nevertheless, Brian comes on and learns the program from following me around, teaching the kids that I was instructing, begins to involve himself and get involved with teaching, I mean, kids of his own. We get more kids than we can handle. So now Brian's got to start teaching lessons. And, mm -hmm. I mean, he's got a son that's eight years old, and he's the best player on his team because of what Brian 
has learned mm -hmm. just from being around it. You don't have to have a crazy background in baseball. You don't have to be a former major league baseball player to be, I mean, to teach your kid how to hit. You just have to know the concept of what's mm -hmm. going on. We're talking about a straight line all the time. All the time. I know one of the people. Got a question? In the Camwood teaching, does scat loading ever get talked about in the swing? No, it does not. This one is one that – um this one's fun for me. I probably know where you've heard from. The scat, I mean, it's way back here on my back. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the muscle they're talking about. If this happens, I mean, here's the bat. Let me get a little closer to the camera. If this happens, my bat is now going away from the pitch. So now I've got to go farther to get that weight. If I put my bottom hand on there, my scap is turning me into the plate. So the more I load my scap, the more I'm getting a little bit offline. You load with your yeah. legs. We don't load so much with our hands. A lot of folks get to talking about hand load and scap load and all this. That's natural movement from folks being loose in their upper body. Yeah. Their lower half, go watch Hobby Bias. He is one of the best at loading in his hips. His hip, his back leg, it's almost like he stands on one leg and just curls his hip. I mean, just loads his hip all up, and it causes his upper body to reposition. I didn't move my upper body. I just turned my hip as far as I could turn my hip. Stand right back up. So we're loading not so much with hands and scap. Mm -hmm. We're loading with our hips, our legs, our foundation. Yeah. It's we just, don't want to get too much over the top. Mm -hmm. It's just going to put feeling in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. We want our feeling to be in our knee and our lower half because that's what's going first. We don't want to have to put extra feeling in our hand because um, it'll just throw things off. And yep. it'll fire incorrectly. Insider T original shipping to me now versus Pro T. Oh, what are benefits of? Okay, so he owns the Pro T shipping. Insider T is shipping to him now. Benefits of both. Um, the Insider T is going to be the one that you want to take with you when you go. You don't want to tote that Drill Pro T around. It's going to be a beast, yeah. which you know because you have it. Um, but the Insider T is going to be kind of, I mean, your generic, I mean, traveling T. It's really easy. For us, like if we're hitting in, in the cage, we have lessons going on, we have a righty and a lefty, I'd rather use the insider tee because I only have to move the insider rod back and forth. I don't have to turn the tee all the way around. And yeah. I'm OCD when it comes to looking at it, so I make sure everything's in the right spot. But um, the insider tee, you're going to have less stuff to piece together, less to move around, easier to maneuver and carry around. Mm -hmm. The drill pro tee is going to be the one that you kind of leave at the house and really – let it be your your workshop, I guess. You can go inside, outside, high ball, low ball, two ball, um, standard insider tee setup. So okay. that's kind of my two cents on the mm -hmm. on the tees. I agree. Is there anything to the teacher man hitting technique with the wrist movement? Um, I know I've heard about teacher man because we are on social media. So we watch a lot of people go back and forth at each other and just hammer each other. Some of y'all have heard of um, certified hitting guru, man, those two dudes right there will just clash heads on it. But <laughs> I mean, we always try to take anything anybody gives us and bring it back to the original concept. We're talking about a line that looks like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing this in my swing, at some point, with the weight of the bat being at the end, at some point, that barrel is going to get too steep. And I'm going to be going up the hill. Yeah. I'm not saying that what teacher man, I mean, whatever, to each is own. Mm -hmm. But wrist movement and all this stuff, this is not what I want in my swing. Again, if I just do that, that's going away from the pitch. That's yeah. not even a positive movement towards the pitch. Yeah. I want this. Yeah. If I do that, look what happens to my wrists. They get in that position. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are trying to create stuff before it naturally happens. Yeah. Just let it happen. Just keep driving that elbow. Keep driving your hand, and your wrist will get on plane with the ball. Um, another video that y'all are going to see on YouTube. We got a lot of content kind of flowing right now mm -hmm. um, through Canwood Batch. But Frank and Trey sat down just the other day and went through a, about a 20-minute session of just – how Camwood Bats was invented, why it was invented, um, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff behind it. And Frank was talking about – we were talking about knob to the ball. And a lot of you have probably seen the video of Alex Rodriguez 
talking about how we want to take the knob of the bat to the ball. And his bat was on this, like, almost vertical plane. Some folks smash Alex Rodriguez about that video and say that it's, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't match the plane. I mean, his bat's in a vertical situation. Yes, that's what it looks like when he's holding it in that position. But if he relaxes his hands, the bat lays, lays down. It has yeah. to. I'm going to grab a bat because I can't do it and not prove it. I can say it and not prove my point. Here we are. Alex Rodriguez is going knob to the ball. That's what he thought in his head. That's how he tried to get to the ball in his head. Now, obviously, I'm stiff because my bat's still up. As soon as I relax, boom. Now my bat's going right through the zone on an uphill plane, matching the line of the pitch. Yeah. So a lot of times kids will get to here, wrists will get low. I tell them, keep your barrel above your hands. It's not going to stay in that position. There ain't no kid doing that. Eventually, it's going to level out because that's where the weight's at. Yeah. That's why the bat was made like it was, mm -hmm. to naturally lay itself down. Yeah. Here's another question. My nine-year-old just finished the 30-day program. How many swings, how often do we do maintenance? Um, nine years old, as much, I would say, hit as much as he wants to. Yeah. So if he wants to hit every day, let him hit every day. But every time that he hits, I would start. One-handers, two-handers, weight shift, pipe, every single time. Yeah, if he's able to swing the one hand. If, if, especially if he's like, I mean, today's Thursday and I'm going to hit for 45 minutes after school. I'm going to start before I get my 45 minutes of hitting in, I'm going to get loose with my one-handers, two-handers, weight shifts, and pipe. I'm going to get my body ready to do what it needs to do the right way. Yeah. And then I'm going to go hit. A lot of folks, they get so, oh, I want to hit, I want to hit, I want to hit. They go straight to hitting. And their mechanics gradually go this way mm -hmm. because they don't remind themselves how to do it. So yeah. use those drills. I'd probably say we have 10, 12 swings a piece per drill. Yeah. Once they've been yeah. through the program. I know with my son, he's eight. So your son's got a year on mine. Before every game he has, he comes in the cage with us. And uh, I'll just get a swing ready for the game. So I'll do about maybe 20, 30 balls out of the bucket of him swinging. I'll do most of them with a two-hander because it's not strong to swing the one-hander yet. But I'll just warm them up on that and then about halfway through go to his game bat and just make sure everything's looking right and everything's feeling right for him based on those concepts. Because I know um, some of the younger kids, I don't know how big your nine-year-old is, they, some can swing the one-hander, some can't. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you just have to rely on the two-hander. That doesn't make a difference. The two-hander, you can still have that concept in mind and still teach it. You just um, have to know, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, just have to know what you're doing. But um, yeah. What? Because I I'm telling you, we had we have a couple uh, younger kids in here that just got in here this week. Uh, seven and eight year old, and a ten year old. They probably have about thirty to thirty five swings in them before they're pretty much done. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. tapped out. I mean, yeah. it's just they're just tired. Right? Their mechanics are slumping. So you just have to find that limit to where okay, he's mentally and physically tired. We got to stop. Yeah, okay. things are starting to go bad. We don't like taking young kids, and I mean, I won't take a young kid and do a forty-five minute lesson. Nah. I mean, we're done 30, 35 minutes at the most because yeah. of the fact that attention span is not all the way all the time there. Sometimes you have kids that are more attentive; they mm -hmm. just they yeah. just like that. But not all the time are the kids like that. So you've got to be short, sweet, to the point, and you've got to be specific in what you're trying to do in those 20 or 30 swings. Yeah. That's why Carl has seen so much improvement is because Brian's his coach, his dad, he's the one working with him. He's being so specific about what we're trying to do. The concept that we work on every day does not change. It's the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. So he's gradually, I mean, getting better, but his, his improvement is like large increments yeah. every time. Another question from Chris. Uh, what about 13-year-olds? How many swings before each – uh, how many swings each before batting? Probably about the same, really. Um, I'm I'm a ten to twelve guy. Trey was like a he may have been a ten to fifteen guy or fifteen to twenty guy. I don't know. It just really depends on the player. Yeah, I would I would start thinking about consistency. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter if I take 10, 15 swings if they're all 
all over the place. Okay? Yeah, that's right. If I got so if nine I get, of them in the dirt. Yeah, and... I mean, start thinking about consistency when warming up. If I can get five to six, boom, 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 all right, my hands are good. Let's move on to the next drill. That consistency aspect is going to help the feel happen. If I don't have consistency, even with those 10 to 15 swings, it really wouldn't matter. Right. My hands are, I'm still not quite sure how my hands are working today because they're not really consistent. They're off. So start thinking about the consistency of those 10 to 15 swings yes. rather than the number. Mm -hmm. And you some days may show up and it be eight swings. And then mm -hmm. tomorrow you show up and it be 18 swings yeah. because that's just, you, mm -hmm. you're tight. I yeah. mean, your body's slower to get moving. Yeah. Um, you really have to judge it based off the kid. Based off, I mean, you got to ask them. Mm -hmm. Give them a give them a ten to twelve. Give them a ten to fifteen. I mean, mm -hmm. here's you an idea. But when they feel loose, move to the next drill. Keep yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I love Thursdays, folks. I do. I really yeah. enjoy this. And we'll talk about another thing because I'm around him all the time. I know he's got a game today, but um, my son has been doing good. But at his last game, uh, we like to talk about approach a little bit, even with him eight years old, okay? Make sure that when they're starting to have success with this concept, line drive, opposite field, that they don't start doing too much. They don't start, okay, I'm hitting the ball so good now. I think I can hit it out of the park. And now the swing starts to slump, and everything looks great at practice. Um, I know the last game, um, he had a little bit of pressure on him this last inning because they were losing. But um, he went up there and tried to make something big happen. He tried to hit ball deep in the outfield home run. And concept change at the plate. Mechanics change, ended up striking out. One, two, three. I mean, little things like that that you implement into their mind when they're doing these drills, when they're going into games, it helps focus. It helps them focus on a point instead of – because there could be nine different pitches up at that zone that could be a yes, strike. Yeah, well, it gives them something to go back to. Yeah. You know I mean, you're talking and, about an eight-year-old kid, man. You know how easy it is for them to go yeah. – I mean, just <laughs> yeah. distract it, just yeah. like that. So you've got to give them something to go back to. Mm -hmm. All this stuff's going on. Yeah, we're getting beat by four runs right now. But, hey, yeah. look, 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 look. All I need you to do line drop. is just hit me a line drive. Yeah. Line drive. Your, if coaches are listening to this, please go start. Your team's down by four runs. Give this speech the next time. Look, yeah. I get where we're at. I hate being down by four runs. But all we have to do here, if every one of us can hit a line drive, we'll win. Yeah. Telling you, just stay inside the ball and just try to barrel it up. Just try to hit a line drive. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're, you're going to see improvement because your concept of success and what you're trying to do is not win the game. Yeah. You're playing baseball. So, I mean, baseball is not, I mean, win the game, lose the game. Baseball is hitting, fielding, catching, running, and throwing. So, be good at the one you have to do right then. Be good at hitting. Yeah. Hit a line drop. Kids my son's age 13. Kids my son's age 13 and 14 focused on lifting weights now. Do you think if my son isn't lifting that he isn't going to get a home run, even with doing Camwood? Do kids need to lift weights to hit harder? Um, it is a fact, I'm telling you this as a skinny guy, and one that did not like to lift weights. You have got to lift weights at some point. I ain't saying that he's got to go pile in the weight room right now, but at some point your body's going to hit a ceiling. That's as strong as your body is. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be, do more than that, if you want to have more power, you, I mean, your swing cannot get any better. Gage Schaefer will tell that story. Yeah, It's as good as it's going to get. You've got to go to the gym mm -hmm. because your body's capped out. It's maxed out. That's yeah. all it can do. So you've got to make your body stretch. Just kind of like you've done your swing, you have to grind on it. you got to make it stretch. you got to make your muscles sore, make them bigger, make them stronger, eat a lot. That's another big one. Yeah, gain some weight. Eat a lot so you're gaining weight. And, yeah, you're going to see that. Um, now. I mean, am I an advocate of, like, a 9-, 10-year-old kid running in there lifting weights? Nah, not really. I mean, yeah. I'd rather that kid learn how to hit. Mm -hmm. You learn how to hit. You'll grow well, eventually. You we'll can teach you how to lift weights at some yeah. point. But You can strengthen muscles without lifting weights. Right. Conditioning, body weight movements. Push-ups, sit-ups. All, yeah. all these things can strengthen your body more if, you're, if your kid's just too young to get into the weight room because it can, it, can, it can hurt 
younger kids getting in the weight room too early, especially if they don't know what they're doing. And if they're the folks but, they're in um, there with don't know what they're doing. Kids can get hurt. But I always like to go back, even though people are lifting weights, okay, I can't have the mindset of the weight room when I go to hit. Okay. I got to be thinking to myself loose and fast. I don't got I don't need to get caught up on those muscle gains and to get incorporating it into my swing because then I'm gonna get real tight, oh, real yeah. slow. You go to the you go yeah. to the plate feeling like you're bench pressing and mm -hmm. in the middle of the bench press you ain't loose. You tense yeah. up. So you get up there and then right before contact you're tensing up and everything mm -hmm. in your swing's slowing down. Yeah. I mean we lift weights to get our body strong, but we don't want to and we're kind of bouncing around this topic a little yeah. bit. Um you don't want to lift weights as a baseball player to a point that you're too stiff, that you're walking around and your arms are bent like this because you can't stretch them back out. I mean, one thing about me, I'm not big. You can see my little little bitty old bicep trying to bounce right here. But I'm flexible all the way down. I can move. I can get to full extension mm -hmm. in my swing. Somebody that's too tight, their full extension is going to be this right here because their arm don't want to go that far no more. Yeah. If you want to think about a workout plan uh, for baseball, I'll go look up track workouts. People that have done sprinting, mm -hmm. boxing, stuff like that, their workout is based on explosiveness. It's based on being loose and fast. Mm -hmm. And I think if you – I know I didn't do this because I played football too. So I was back and forth between doing workouts that are explosive and then doing really heavy weight. It got me real tight and stronger, but it limited my extension. Those type of workouts that track stars do for sprinting, um, they go all the way up the body. And boxing, this helps understand how to move things quickly by breathing, which is going to create better looseness in your swing. I think if you could go um, look up some of those type things and get him into that, I think those will benefit him more than going to the weight room and just trying to lift super heavy weight. Mm -hmm. It's going to help him with muscle isolation, quicker movements, and uh, how to breathe properly and keep looseness in your body. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Chris, this will this will be on YouTube later on today, um, so you, you can take him there and show him this video. Yeah, I totally get where you're at. I mean, I, I was there. I was so skinny, y'all. I was. It was the hardest thing for me to do to try to gain weight. Mm -hmm. Every night, I mean, I remember yeah. high school. My dad would have to fix me a sandwich, peanut butter and banana sandwich. Yeah. I think he put honey on there too. Every single night, and when he put peanut butter, man, it was thick. Yeah. I mean, I remember his mouth was all plotted up because you. I had mean, you, you see me and John. We're, we're not super big guys. I no, know I, have a I mean, more and John, the most I, mean, I ever weighed, good. the most I've ever weighed in my life was like one sixty eight, right at close to one seventy, and that was, I mean, my senior year of college, yeah. my peak in my career yeah i was about to say i got to around 200 i don't have to eat like that any, but i had to, i mean i don't have to eat like that now but i had to eat all the time mm -hmm. to get to that size yeah i probably could have done other things i mean healthy things i ain't talking about like taking steroids there yeah. were some things that i mean looking back now i probably should have done that i did i mean i should have probably ate a little bit more than i did but mm -hmm. i ate as much as i felt like i could eat yeah. You've got to eat. You've got to eat. You've got to eat. You've got to eat as much as you can. The best thing for me was peanut butter, banana sandwiches at night, right before you go to bed with a glass of almond milk. Yeah. And I think, uh, I know people hear this all the time. I know doctors say it all the time, but I feel like a big breakfast is very important when gaining weight because it increases your metabolism. That's one reason I'm not big because I don't, I've never really ate big breakfast. Because it, it gets your metabolism going right in the morning fast and early so the rest of the day you're starving mm -hmm. you're wanting to eat 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 and it's going to help him have that appetite to gain weight rather than having a small breakfast okay my metabolism is not really starting so i'm not really feeling hungry i feel a little hungry at lunch and then i eat a bigger lunch so then my metabolism kicks in well by that time i only have one more meal a couple of snacks maybe before i go to bed mm -hmm. and then you go to sleep and then you burn off everything so if you start that breakfast big and learn how to eat the breakfast that's bigger, you're going to kickstart that, and now my rest of the day I'm going to be starving. So yeah. he's going to eat a lot more and gain that weight. Very good. Very good. Any other questions?
You will. Help. Trust me, me and Johnson have been there. We've been through everything y'all's kids are going through right now. And, let, and gaining weight was one of those struggles. And if we hadn't been there, we played with somebody that's been through it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Gaining weight was tough. Man, that was tough for me. It, it still is now. I mean, I could go – I mean, I don't eat near like I used to. I eat a lot yeah. less. But I could go for a couple weeks and eat, 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 and it would be tough for me to put it on. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all of a sudden going like, to hit me like a bat. Boom, yeah. and I'm going to be sitting up yeah, here in this chair. Be blown up. No, I'll, I'll turkey on enough to keep my weight now. We got any turkey hunters in here? Ooh. Any other questions before we go? Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. Yep. All of you. Really appreciate it. When you say YouTube, what link? It'll be Cam Wood Bats uh, YouTube channel. So if you'll go uh, to YouTube and just type in Cam Wood Bats, you should be able to see the YouTube channel. If you'll subscribe to that channel. Actually, I'll go send you the link to the YouTube channel real quick. If I can pull it up. Anybody been keeping up with Tennessee this year? Dude's been hitting it. Yeah. Hitting it. And talk about the medicine ball. Um, that's a really good thing to do for kids. Um, strengthens your core a lot. Teaches you how to control your body with that medicine ball with your lower half. Mm-hmm. And as, it's, it's really good emphasis, especially on recreating swings and how I have to get my stability from my abs and legs rather than my upper body. And it's, it's just a good way to isolate that kind of stuff. So I totally agree. Medicine ball workouts are really good. If you click that link right there, that should take you to the YouTube channel. And you'll be able to find the video on there later on today. You'll already see some of our older videos are up there as well. But this one will be posted um, to the YouTube channel too. So very good. If we do not have any other questions, we're going to go ahead and kind of sign off today. We surely appreciate it. That focus is going out. It's roughing my eyes up. Whew. There we go. There it goes. All right. We appreciate it, guys. Yeah. We've enjoyed it. Y'all have a great weekend. If you have any questions, text us on the hotline. You can find that number inside of the Camwood program. And if we don't hear you hear from you between now and then, we'll see you next week right here on yeah. Camwood Live.